Okay, like always, I think this is like the 10th time i try to make a video. Let's see if I can get through it this time. I just want to show polarity stuff today. I'm going to show three different configurations. The first one is uh, just the input coil versus POC1. Uh, and then the two other configurations, I want to make a point of showing how one is better than the other. Uh, you see a better output. Um, first configuration. Okay, so traditionally, um, on the website, what the experiment shows is to have POC1 opposing the input coil. So I'm assuming that means on the rise time. So what we have here is I got my positive coming in this top wire here. It wraps around this way. So magnetic field that way to the right. Uh, that is applied voltage, POC1, the diode is set so that magnetic field goes this way and it opposes the input coil. And of course POC2, for all these configurations, the diode is going to be set so that it opposes POC1. So right now what we see on the scope, let me see if I can zoom in a bit, at the bottom, the blue trace, is uh, just the signal on the input coil. The purple is the current over POC1 and the green is the current over POC2. So you see as the input rises, so does the current on POC1. It is engaging during the rise time. And of course the light lights up. And POC2 seems like it's just being stuffed because the diode is not allowing it to do anything. Uh, if we zoom in a bit here, we can see as the input turns off here, uh, POC1 wants to collapse as well. Um, nothing really holding it up at that point. So we have POC1 collapsing and POC2, uh, I'm sorry, the input is collapsing and POC1 is collapsing. So, uh, the diode is not allowing the POC1 to really collapse correctly, I guess. Anyways, that's why I see kind of a drop and a hiccup. As the input collapses, it immediately engages with the POC2, and then this rise of POC2 is what's engaging with POC1. So, we do see opposition there. And uh, I'm saying that because if uh, if I remove the short on POC2, we see that POC2 current flat lines, obviously. And then on POC1, uh, this little bump here that we saw, the engagement uh, is gone. So that was engagement with POC2. Okay, so, but with this configuration where uh, POC1 opposes the input coil on the rise time. I uh, honestly haven't been able to get it much better than this. If you look at the purple trace, there's really not much engagement going on between the POC coils. Um, so the way I've been doing it actually, uh, let me go ahead and pause the video and I will set that up in one second. Okay, so basically all I've done is I bumped up the frequency a little bit. We're at 7 kilohertz right now. Uh, I switched around the input, so now the positive is going in this side of the coil, which wraps around over the top. Let me back out the camera a sec. Wraps around over the top, magnetic field going that way. So the diode is still set on POC1 to where... Uh, any induced voltage or current would create a uh, magnetic field this way and would stop the other direction. So essentially the input coil would be now opposing POC2, not POC1. So let me show on the scope here what I'm talking about. Okay, so we see a nice sawtooth. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, so same blue trace as the input. 
purple is POC1, green is POC2, currents. Uh, so rise time during the input here. So we see on POC1, uh, it's not engaging um, directly with the input coil. See, there's kind of actually kind of a struggle. It's trying to bring itself up, uh, but that's because it's engaging with POC2. Um, and we can see that POC2 is actually engaging straight away with the input, though it's kind of weak because I'm sure it's just because the coupling of the input coil is bad to POC2. So, uh, when the input coil drops, um, the magnetic field direction switches because it's collapsing. And we see at that point, let me bring down POC2 a bit, we see at that point uh, a direct influence on uh, POC1. So the collapsing field of the input coil is now engaging with POC1, which is then allowing POC1 to engage with POC2. And then you get the nice sawtooth drop off. And I think that's all I wanted to say about that. So, yeah, so that'll that explains what I was talking about on the forum, but I think I th have things backwards, but this is the way I've been doing it and, and using it, and that kind of makes sense to me. Anyways, so let me back this out. So the polarity thing I want to talk about is um, akin to the some coils buck and some coils don't experiment. Um, when we pulse this input coil, it of course has a magnetic field that also has this A vector potential that is swirling vortex style around the core and that vortex is going to interact with the other coils differently depending on how the coils are wound and I just want to show that this is absolutely true um, and I do need to make some adjustments so hold on one second let me pause the video again and I'll get back to you okay so I've got this set up now to where, uh, same as I showed before, the PO, or the input coil is actually, um, the diodes are set up so the input coil opposes POC2, um, not POC1. The collapsing field of the input coil will oppose POC1 and then interact with POC2. So, yeah, pulse come in on this wire. Magnetic field that way, apply voltage. POC1 will have a magnetic field. Diode setups of the magnetic field will also be that direction. Uh, but what I want to show is uh, POC1 right now, the induced voltage is coming out, or induced current, I guess you could say, coming out the left side here which is the outer turns of the coil and then going in on the right side here which is where I began winding the coil it's the inside layer and right now we're looking at I've got some math function going here it's about 1.14 1 1.15 watts that we're looking at so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the polarity of everything um, so POC1 and POC2 will still oppose each other. I'm just going to switch the wires over so that the uh, the positive is coming out the inside, uh, not the outside turn. And then I'm also switch the input. So one second. Okay, back. So again, I switched the input. So that magnetic field's firing the other direction, uh, and I switched the uh, leads on the two POC coils. The POC coils are still opposing each other. Diodes are still set up so that the POC coils are still opposing each other. Uh, it's just now that when the uh, voltage is induced, the collapsing field of the input coil induces voltage on POC1, it is now on uh, the inside turns of the coil, not the outside. And 
we're sitting right now at about 1.25 watts. Sometimes it bumps up to about 1.3 watts. So uh, we see a rise of, I don't know, we'll say roughly 100 milliwatts uh, just because of the direction of the coils and uh, how the input coil is interacting with them. And I think that's all I wanted to say. I can't remember anything else. I'm super tired. The whole family's sick again. Um, so I guess I'm going to wrap up this video. I'll just leave it at that. All right, thanks.